Damn, I need to shave. Fucking beanie antics for sickest neck beard of all time. But what is going on everybody? This is Beanie and welcome back to another commentary video. I've only done two commentary videos. I haven't been nearly as consistent as I wanted to be, but I put out a schedule yesterday in my video. Go check that out if you haven't already. And I set it to where every Monday I'm going to be coming out with a new commentary video. And uh, yeah, so I need a schedule or I'm going to be lazy as fuck. So yeah, you'll, you'll, new, new commentary every Monday. Check it out. But anyways, guys, with this commentary, I have three news stories that I'm bringing you today. There was just too much for me to pick from. There was, the world is going fucking insane, guys. It is incredible how fucking stupid people are. And there was just no way to pick. It was just all insanity. But first off, we have this fucking huge story from CNN. Uh, James O'Keefe, who is dressed the biggest fucking gangster in the planet, <laughs> he went undercover again and exposed the fuck out of CNN. Like he's done it to Acorn. You remember that fucking Acorn housing fucking place? I, for I forgot what the fuck they even did, but they did um, some really shitty things. James O'Keefe exposed that. I think he's done some shit with Planned Parenthood and stuff like that, which, you know, debate that all you want, but he is a gangster, dude. Like, dude goes hard on people, and he, like, brings down... I think he brought down Van Jones, too. Like, dude is just... He is slick, man. He is really slick. But anyways, he went undercover with, uh, with, with, with somebody, and he got this producer from CNN... To, to say what exactly CNN has been doing since Trump has been elected, and needless to say, it was pretty interesting. Then why is CNN constantly like, Russia this, Russia that? Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. But honestly, you'd, you'd think the whole Russia shit is just like bullshit. Could be bullshit. I mean, we, it's mostly bullshit right now. Like, we don't have any big giant proof. I just feel like they don't really have it, but they they want to keep digging. Mm -hmm. And so I think the president is probably right to say, like, look, you are witch hunting me. Like, you have no smoking gun. You have no real proof. And the CEO of CNN said in our internal meeting, he said, good job, everybody, covering the climate accords. But we're done with it. Let's get back to Russia. You know, I say this is interesting, but like, really, is anybody surprised by this? Was there anybody that watched this and was like, oh shit, bro, CNN has been selectively picking out stories to focus on Trump Russia for ratings? Is anybody surprised by this at all? Like, everybody knew that CNN was anti Trump, they don't like the guy. And, there, you, you know, and it's ratings. Like, everybody that watches CNN is a fucking SJW who just goes around just beating their dick to, to bad Donald Trump stories. It's, I mean, it's a well-known thing. I don't think anybody is really surprised by it. But it does, I, I mean, it's pretty crazy to have a guy from a news organization just come out and say, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. We are, uh, we're pretty much lying at this point and just, you know. It's cool, it's whatever, but uh, lots of people watch it, so thumbs up. And really, I think that this just points to the fact that objective journalism is a myth. Like, I, d does anybody honestly believe that CNN, Fox News, MSNBC were ever objective at any point? Even Walter fucking Cronkite, everybody points to him as the objective journalist. He was never fucking objective. He always had an agenda. Everybody has an agenda. The important thing is just to be transparent about it. And that's kind of the thing, but that's kind of why I respect Fox News and MSNBC. And I always kind of had a problem with CNN is that Fox News, they just, I mean, they, they didn't try to hide anything. Yes, we are conservative. I know they have the whole fair and balanced thing, but nobody's buying that shit. They're fairly transparent in their bias. MSNBC is the same way. MSNBC, we're liberals. We're going to, you know, cover things with a liberal angle, a lean forward. That, isn't, that, isn't that MSNBC? I don't know. That might be CNN. I don't know. But that, that is, that, that's their whole thing is they're liberals. Uh, liberals. CNN has always been a little bit more um, deceptive in their practice. They've always tried to position themselves as the middle of the road 
and it was always bullshit. They were always the, the liberal alternative to Fox News along with MSNBC. They split each other's ratings and that's why Fox News kills the shit out of them in the ratings is because Fox News has one that they pretty much have 50% of the country and then CNN and MSNBC have 25% each because they just split the liberals right down the middle. Now, being critical of CNN, is, it, you know, is very important because they they do come off as pieces of shit in this particular scenario. But I, th- I also think it's important to realize that Donald Trump is a fucking 16 year old girl. He really is. Anytime CNN even says Donald's name or MSNBC uh, says Donald's name, what does Donald do? He goes to fucking Twitter, just like, oh my God, just like a 16 year old girl would do and go, oh, CNN, more fake news in all caps. He always, he always says fake news in all caps with exclamation points. Like he, God, he's so stupid. And then, uh, you know, he'll go with fake news. Their ratings are, are struggling because of this. CNN is always lying about things. MSNBC is always lying about things. It's pretty much like, like uh, bullying almost. Even though, like, I'm not saying MSNBC and CNN don't deserve it because they, they do. But I, I would kind of prefer it not come from the leader of the free world. But this is kind of something that Donald has always done. He's always kind of equated money and like ratings with truth. Um, success does not equal truth. And you know, he's done it his whole career. Like anytime CNN has been critical or even Fox news has been critical or Ted Cruz has been critical or, um, anybody he's always said, Oh, look, they're struggling in this way or they would be nowhere without me. He did that to Penn Jillette. Um, I remember Penn Jillette was not a big Donald Trump fan, and he said he's a he's a big libertarian, kind of like me, and he said something critical of Donald Trump, and Donald Trump came out and was like Penn Jillette was uh, he had a struggling career before he was on The Apprentice. He would be nowhere without me. Donald Penn Jillette is a multi multi millionaire. He would have been fine if he would have never been on The Celebrity Apprentice. I I, I promise Penn Jillette is doing fine. And I would kind of like that to come from just you know bullies, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not against bullying. I'm really not. I like, I think the whole anti-bullying thing has kind of led to, led to some of the problems. I think that kids these days kind of need to get tied to a tetherball pole every now and then, you know, but I, but you know, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here, but Donald Trump really is just kind of like a, a 10 year old girl or a 16 year old girl. Sorry, I'm not giving him enough credit there. It's just like, oh, you're a fucking nerd. Your ratings are fucking low. You're going nowhere. You're a piece of shit. You're lying all the time. And CNN's like, no, we're not. We're, we're real. We're real. We, we're smart. And we do stuff. And Donald Trump's like, no, you're a faggot. You're a fucking idiot. You're ugly. Nobody's going to want to stick their dick inside of you. And CNN's like, yes, huh? There's plenty of people that want my pussy wrapped around their dick. Oh God, what the fuck am I doing? Where the fuck is this even going? I don't know. I kind of forgot whenever I started talking about dicks. Let's move on to the next story. And believe me, this one is a doozy. Okay. Um, VidCon was about a week ago, a little over a week ago, I think. And, um, there were some interesting things that happened. For those of you who don't know, VidCon is just like a convention, um, you know, kind of like Comic Con or something, but it's for YouTube creators or really just content creators in general to get together and to, you know, do convention shit, I guess. Well, everyone's resident worst person in the world, Anita Sarkeesian, was there. And Anita Sarkeesian, for those of you who don't know, does um, Feminist Frequency, which um, is basically where she just takes people's money and puts out a project maybe like once every like year. Like she does no work. She does like, she'll make a Kickstarter. I need $500,000 to do a PowerPoint presentation on why men are terrible and video games are terrible. She's big into video games and stuff like that. And then she doesn't do it for like, you know, like a year and the production costs are like one 20th of what she says they are. Anyways, uh, Anita Sarkeesian, uh, is at, at this panel and it's an anti-harassment panel. And this is what happens. Hi, Hamster. I love you, too. You're making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And, like, I hate to give you attention because you're a garbage human. 
Whatever, dude. Sorry about the video quality there. That was the only clip that I could find isolated, but there, there are some better quality clips out there if you want to go check it out. Um, who, she ad who she is addressing is Sargon of Akkad, who is another YouTube commentator who has made many videos critical of her in the past. Not like bullying or, you know, harassment or any of that stupid shit that she would have you believe, but just videos critiquing her ideas because her ideas are hot garbage. And she is going... <laughs> It's it's fucking unbelievable. She is at this uh she is at this panel for harassment. Like she is anti-harassment, anti-bullying and all this and she is saying Sargon, you are a garbage piece of human and you know gar uh him and guys like Andy Worski and stuff had come to the panel to listen to what she had to say. They weren't saying anything. They weren't disruptive. They weren't they were just sitting in the front row of the panel listening and she just points them out, isolates them and says you are a piece of a fucking shit <laughs> and it is just so insane like the the cognitive dissonance here that you're at a harassment panel and you're saying you're a piece of shit you're a garbage human I you know suck my clit like I don't even know if that's like what women say that that women should start saying that suck my clit that would kind of work wouldn't it like that'd be kind of cool but basically, she just harassed someone at an anti-harassment panel. And then she goes on to defend herself later on by saying that just by him being there, just by him sitting in the front row, that was an act of aggression and an act of harassment um, because uh, she wasn't comfortable sitting there. She's got to be the biggest pussy in the world that Sargon of Akkad's mere existence in, in, in this space and time while she is up there talking is a form of harassment. He's not doing anything. He's just chilling. He's listening. He's, he's wanting to hear some different ideas so that, you know, maybe he can disagree and maybe they can talk about it or something like that. But he's not saying anything. He's just sitting there and she starts just berating him and harassing him. It's fucking insane. I can't believe it. Um, Anita Sarkeesian, you're an asshole. I don't know if you can call girls assholes or like a dick. You're a dick. Um, I don't want to say cunt. It seems like I say cunt too much. So I'm just going to stick with asshole. And, uh, you're kind of, a uh, a, a feminist whore. You kind of whore yourself out to feminism. Um, you get tons and tons and tons of money from Patreon and Kickstarter and all this stuff. And you never make any, pro uh, you never make any projects and the projects that you do make are cheaply made and often wrong. So, um, go fuck yourself, Anita Sarkeesian. You are a turd. But yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Guys, please don't, like, go out and, you know, like, send out death threats or any stupid shit like that or harass people, um, that I make videos about. I know that for a lot of YouTube commentators, that has become kind of a problem. And I think it makes our side of the community look pretty bad when we do it. So I would really appreciate it if you didn't do that. Um... And, uh, yeah, just, um, don't be a dick. That is the end of the video, guys. Please leave a like. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Um, and tell a friend about this, guys. And for those of you who are definitely not into the commentary stuff and are more into the MLB The Show stuff, please don't go out and, like, unsubscribe because of this. I promise that I'm going to get into uh, more MLB The Show content. And if you disagree with me politically on things and you have a problem with what I say, you think that I'm wrong about things whenever I make a commentary, um, please, uh, if, it, you know, instead of unsubscribing, talk to me about it. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'd love to know. Um, I'd love to maybe have a conversation with you and make a video out of it. Um, I love people disagreeing with me on stuff. Um, this video was kind of, I, to me, I think it was pretty cut and dry. I don't really know, uh, what there was to disagree about. I don't know. Maybe you like Donald Trump and you disagree with me saying he's a bully. Um, or a 16 year old girl, maybe you disagree with me on CNN or Anita or something. I don't know, but if you disagree with me, let me know. And, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. I love debating, arguing stuff like that. It's that's my shit, bro. That's almost more my shit than MLB. The show is my shit. But, uh, but anyways, guys, I love y'all. Thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. It's been overwhelming and I will see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>